have the loot. <laughs> oh. The Dark Zone. It's lawless. It's lucrative. It's plural? That's right. In The Division 2, there are three distinct Dark Zones, each claiming its own unique neighborhood of Washington, D.C., and each with its own stories to tell. She needs help. That yellow shit is blowing all over the place. You wanna be next? They are dangerous places where you can hunt and be hunted by both enemy factions and other players. And the dynamics are evolving to give you new reasons to go rogue and more ways to score sweet gear. Initiating rogue protocol. But the Dark Zones aren't the only multiplayer option we checked out. We also went a few rounds with the new organized PvP modes. Here's what we learned. Crime pays. There's a new way to go rogue for fun and profit in the Dark Zone. Become a thief. Break into a locked chest or steal the entire contents of a DZ drop and you'll earn more loot than you normally would. You'll also be marked rogue and become vulnerable to attack from your fellow agents. Watch out, there's one coming for you. But your thievery will reveal a hidden signal. Follow it by completing more rogue actions and you can eventually unlock a secret entrance to the thieves' den. In the Thieves' Den, you'll have access to a special vendor with valuable wares, and you'll have your rogue status cleaned and cleared. Clean Loot Dark Zone Extractions are a tempting target for players looking to go rogue and rob their fellow agents. So securing your contaminated loot is always a bit risky. However, in The Division 2, some of the loot you find in a Dark Zone will be clean. That means you can equip it whenever you like, and you can't lose it if you die, so your DZ runs will be that much more lucrative. Normalization If a player with powerful gear rolls up on a player with weak gear, the results could be messy. Oh, get stuck. <laughs> That's where normalization comes in. In The Division 2, most Dark Zones will be normalized which means all gear and weapon stats are brought within a narrow range, okay, so one. no one totally outclasses anyone else. While you can still take your prey down quickly with a clever ambush, you now have a better chance to react, survive, and decide whether you want to retreat or push the engagement. They're flanking right, flanking right. Got him down. Oh, no. Occupied Dark Zones. Did you catch how I said most Dark Zones will be normalized? Well, once you reach the end game, Dark Zones will start becoming occupied for set periods of time. We can't show you one just yet, but we can tell you that an occupied Dark Zone is not normalized. Got another one down. So every ounce of juice you can squeeze out of your gear will give you an edge. Furthermore, there are no icons telling you who is rogue and who is not. And friendly fire is always on. Kinda makes you wonder what sort of loot is in store for players willing to brave those conditions. Shades of Rogue. Take this short quiz to discover how rogue you are. Have you just entered a dark zone or only been fighting enemy factions? You are not rogue. Other players can't damage you unless they are rogue. Have you broken into a chest, stolen an entire DZ drop, or held down the button to toggle you and your teammates rogue? Rogue protocol initiated. Then you are rogue. You can attack other players to earn XP, gain currency, and steal their loot, but any other player can try to take you out. Have you turned rogue and taken out another player? You are now disavowed rogue. Your agent status is disavowed. The red icon means you are more visible on the map to other players, so watch your back. Finally, have you really leaned in to the disavowed rogue thing and killed a bunch of other agents? Then you have reached your final form, Manhunt Rogue. Manhunt, now in effect. All players are alerted to your presence. The bounty on your head is sizable. Knowing the four Dark Zone states is essential to living your best Dark Zone life, as is knowing how to clear them, letting your timer expire without performing rogue actions, visiting the Thieves' Den, dying and respawning, 
or hacking a manhunt terminal are reliable ways to get clean. But if you want to double down, you can sabotage the manhunt terminal. This will make your manhunt more difficult, but also more rewarding. Just remember, you still have to find and access another terminal to lose the manhunt and get your loot. Ease into it. Now, if you're having visions of getting jumped by other players immediately upon entering a dark zone, fear not. Your first visit to a dark zone will be a PvE mission, so you'll only have enemy factions to worry about. These missions give you a chance to learn how that dark zone turned dark, and get to know the lay of the land. For example, one of the DZs began as a depot for shipments of military gear, so be on the lookout for places that you can use the shipping containers and rail cars to your advantage. And keep an eye on the vegetation as well. Washington DC is pretty overgrown these days, and the tall grass can obscure your position while you make sure nobody messes with your loot extraction. Cargo loaded, ready to go. Organized PvP. When you just want to mix it up with your fellow agents, conflict is the place to do it. This is where you'll find organized PvP, with three custom-made maps and two modes at launch, skirmish and domination. Yep, here they come. Point Alpha was captured by your team. These fights will be normalized, just like the Dark Zones, and they'll be set up with skill-based matchmaking. He's right here. Conflict will have its own progression track and rewards, although I think we can all agree that scaring the crap out of other players with explosive crossbow bolts is a reward unto itself. You're gonna learn a lot more about the Division 2 in the lead-up to launch on March 15th. You can pre-order now to guarantee your access to the upcoming private beta, or register on the official Division 2 site for a chance to get in. Be sure to stay up to date on the latest Division news by subscribing to this YouTube channel and by visiting us at news.ubisoft.com.